All right, you're back with Master Beekeeper Jason Miller, and uh, today we're going to talk about second round supering. We're kind of getting uh, mid to late July here in North Dakota. Um, the first round of crops has been cut and hayed. So um, as you can see, lots of fresh bales of hay all around me. Uh, things are much shorter around the bee yard than right here in the bee yard because they've uh, cut it. It's regrown. Um, and so we're into what we call the second um, round of cutting for the alfalfa and uh, pasture land. So um, kind of depending on how things are as far as moisture and heat uh, will really depend on what additional honey might be made uh, from here until mid-August when really the honey flow is over out here in, in the Dakotas, uh, for us anyway. And so these beehives were supered about 20 days ago. Um, kind of in that mid-June time frame, mid to late June, and uh, we're going to take a look, see if they've made any honey, and uh, see if they might need some more additional honey super. So this is what we call second round supering. We did first round in the last video of this series. Today we're going to be showing you second round supering. Um, one of the differences that, that I wanted to show you today, I've got some plastic frames on the truck. Uh, last time they were all wood frames, like you can see here we have eight of them and they have these real wide shoulders and so they're spaced much further apart. These plastic frames, uh, which when I say plastic, I mean they're all plastic, 100% all the way around and then the bees build the wax off of that plastic start. Now the other ones are plastic, it's just a wooden frame with a plastic insert in the middle that the bees uh, start to build their honeycomb off of. But these plastic ones, everything is plastic. So they're much stronger on the ears. They don't break off. Uh, we can fit 10 of them in here. They're more narrow. Um, and they're just much more uniform. As they go through the machinery, you don't have all the variance that you have with the wood frame. So um, we're slowly converting over to plastic. And um, that's a long process. We have about 38,000 of these honey supers. So converting uh, takes many, many years. And we're uh, about eight years into the process and have about a third of our honey supers are now uh, plastic frames. So uh, we'll take a look. I'll show you what it looks like. You know, obviously here we have an empty um, frame, no honey in it. It's gone through the machine. It's it's had the honey from uh, last season taken out. And uh, I'll throw on my veil, take a look inside some beehives, and see if they might need uh, some more supers. I'm hopeful that we're going to have some additional honey. It's it's been a good year as far as uh, moisture had a decent amount and we've had some nice hot days like today um, and then tomorrow's even forecasted into the mid 90s so uh, we've got some heat in the forecast had a little bit of rain these past couple of weeks and so this second this later season flow of uh, should be pretty good as well as some of the late crops you know when I was talking about what we make honey um, earlier in the series the sunflowers for example those haven't even come up yet and begun to bloom so those won't be until August the buckwheat is similar. It, it's a late season bloom. Uh, and then the alfalfa, the clover, the pasture land, that gets cut multiple times, two, sometimes even three cuttings in a season. Um, and, and so we're about halfway through that second cutting. So let's open this up. And uh, so this looks really good. What, what I want to see is this white frosting again where the bees have, have really uh, built it out. I'll show you this frame of honey here this looks really nice so here it's completely filled sealed over look at how light it looks like water I mean if you bought this in the grocery store you'd think you're being scammed that it's not actual honey look at how light that is it just is we call this water white um, clover alfalfa honey so the early stuff is, is just super clear uh, very mild and, and we get interesting enough a premium for both the really light and the really dark because they can blend that together in order to make what you see on the grocery store shelves, which is a multi floral blend of honeys. Um, but, but this, like I said, this early season honey is just super light. And, and this is a beautiful frame here. In fact, one of my favorite things, the bees will fill this right back up. But look at how I can get that nice, thick uh, hive tool of honey and wax there. Just tastes phenomenal. Suck on that wax. It's like energy for, for working in the in the bee yard. Now you can see where I've cut that out. The bees will go right back to fixing that. If we come back a couple days later, that's going to be completely repaired. 
and uh, filled back up with, with honey. It's pretty incredible how quickly they can uh, go about. They've already started cleaning up the mess there and, and getting that taken care of. So we're looking really good um, in this particular hive to throw on some additional space. We generally try to give them about a box and a half of space. So we can see that we've got about a half a box right here that, that's not quite you know done. This frame looks exactly like um, they're just barely started. There's just a tiny little spit of honey on there. But um, we'll give them another box and that ought to get them there a box and a half of space. There's all the, the bees on the inside of the cover there. You can see all that nice white new wax. Um, I like to knock them off in front of the entrance there that I don't squish bees when I put the cover back on. Put the rock back up and this thing's going to be good till the end of the month. So um, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more and follow us through this honey series of YouTube videos.